Okay. So now let's consider if we have two permutations and wanted to compose them. So let alpha be equal to, let's say, 1 3, and beta be equal to 1 2 3. Then first we perform beta and then compose it with alpha. What is this equal to? And an operation composition. So, okay, I take first beta is 1 goes to 2, so 1 goes here, 2 goes to 3, and 3 goes back to 1. Here we go. So, this is a new order. Okay, that's beta. Then we do alpha. The one in the 1 position goes to 3, and one in the 3 goes to 1. So, now look what we have. 1 now goes to 2, 2 now goes to 1, and 3 stays the same. So that's how we perform operations. But notice, like a group, everything's invertible. So first of all, we proved the first part. That, uh, well, we didn't prove it, but it's easier to prove. And you can see, composing a 2 permutation, still a permutation. So next part, associativity, Easy. Just, it does not matter the order in which you associate it. And that's a trivial to prove. Last part. Yeah, all these properties easy to prove. The last one is uh, invertibility. So, for example, 2, 1, 3. That's uh, we, every element has inverse. We always bring it back to position 1, 2, 3 through composition. For example, 1, 2, 3. So that 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1, and 3 stays the same, right? So to bring it back, simply take 1, then you take the 2 position, and move it back to 1. And take 1 position, and move it back to 2. Actually, it's just, if we write it in order, it's going to be 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1. So yes, first 1 goes to 2nd position, 2nd position goes back to 1st. So 1, 2, composed of 1, 2, equals E. Very simple. Another example. This is 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3. 3 goes back to 1. Right? So how do I undo this? Simple. Take the first one, put it back. Take the second, okay. Take the first one, first one, the one in the first position, move to the 3. Okay. But then 2 has to go back. Okay, this goes like this. Two has, the one in the third position has to go back to 2. And the one in the second position, which was the 1, has to go back to 1. So 1 goes back to 3, 3 goes to 2, and 2 goes to 1. And that equals identity. So very good. So, this, so, so you can prove rigorously using explicit definition this intuition that it can go, that um, the permutation of the group forms a group, all permutation of three, of uh, n objects. We call this group Sn, and the order of Sn equals n factorial, and you can prove that in combinatorics. Simply for the first part, so suppose I have n objects, well, I have n possibilities for the first one, for example, three objects, It could be either A, B, or C. But then next one, n minus one possible objects. Because after I use A, I cannot use it again. I have to use now B or C. And then after that, I'm left with C. Or let's say, I'm left with B. So each time, I remove one object and I have, I have to choose from the remaining up to one for n positions. Okay, enough of permutation group. Next, I'm going to talk about subgroups. What's a subgroup? Well, first of all, a subgroup is a group. So a subgroup of G comma star 
is a subgroup. A subgroup is a group. Uh, G prime, comma star under same binary operation, such that G star prime is contained in G. So here's something you should know. So many of the properties of G prime is contained in G. For example, associativity maintained. Uh, same binary operation, but you have to make sure it's closed under G prime now. So there's many things that the subgroup property inherits from the bigger group. And so it's easy to check if a subgroup is a group, knowing the bigger guy is a group. So a quick example of a subgroup, consider uh, R under addition, right? That's a group. Uh, pi plus 3 is in R. And we have inverses under addition x minus x equals 0, and we have a 0. Oh, by the way, subgroup has to have same 0. Because remember, all operations maintain. So, OK. And you can prove that rigorously. Anyways, and probably should in the homework assignment. I think there's a question. So but let's look at z comma plus. It is also a group. You have uh, an element x, minus x, and also minus x is in z. Also, guys, remember, z, subset of r. So under same operation, z is a subgroup of r under addition. Same thing with the rationals. Uh, yeah. OK. So, there's uh, something I'd like to show called the subgroup criterion. But before I do that, I'd like to make one more thing that we should talk about before I go into subgroup criterion, is the idea of generators. Okay, so a generator. So no, remember the dihedral group, right? Uh, Dn. It was equal to E comma R comma R1 up to Rn. And it had SR, comma, SR2, up to SRN. Notice that all of these can be generated by two elements. So what we say is generated is a set of elements, a set S generates, uh, generates a set, generates a group if if the set okay if all combinations uh, x1 x2 xm and this is multiplication under the multiplication and we say it generates a group G comma star. If all combinations x1, x2, x, xn for some m, and by the way, x1 could equal to x2. By the way, it may not be distinct. So for example, I could have for some m, so the neo may say they could all be r's. Equals the set G. So, okay, for example, consider S equals R, comma, E. Okay, S equals R, comma, uh, S. Ah, make it S hat so we can distinguish. Then S has generates all of the N. How? Watch. Because R times R times R and times. Also, R. Okay, but by the way, the empty word is considered E. And also, S times R times R. By the way, have I times. 
and we can repeat i many times. So I can